तद्वरम पर्याय भेदमहे ज्ञानलिंगेश्वराय धीमहि तन्नो गुरुः प्रचोदयते ओम ओम योग महर्षि डॉक्टर स्वामी गीतानंद गिरी गुरु महाराज की जय नमस्ते वनकम स्वागतम वेलकम टू येट अनदर सिंटिलेटिंग सैटरडे मॉर्निंग सेशन फ्रॉम द डेक ऑफ आई सी वाई आर एट आनंद आश्रम पाण्डिचेरी साउथ इंडिया टुडे इज अ वेरी ऑस्पेशियस डे इन पाण्डिचेरी वी सेलिब्रेट मासी महम मासी इज द मंथ वी आर करेंटली इन विच रन फ्रॉम द मिडल ऑफ January to the middle of so middle of February to the middle of March it is always said in January January 15th where we have thai pongal thai perandal vali perakum and so everybody is always alert for thai and right after thai you have masi masi is the month magam is the nakshatra the star Masi Magam. So today is the day in the month of Masi, where the Magam Nachatram, that is the star called Magam, the constellation, is in its full force. And this is a day where all the deities from the nearby towns in and around Pondicherry, they all come to Pondicherry to the beach, and have a nice time on the beach. All the gods come to their beach and have a nice time. Tirthavari, Tirthavari, it is called, and they all come and they are given a ceremonial bath in the ocean today, it's the Bay of Bengal. And there are many legends associated with this. They talk about a king who did not have a son to do his ceremonies after his death, and so he worshipped Shiva to come and do it. But one of the stories that locally we have always kept is of sage agastya agastya was one of the great rishis and in fact he is uh, documented to have lived in pondicherry in those days it was called vedapuri the city of the vedas i don't know why they ever changed the name what a beautiful name it would have been for pondicherry vedapuri the city of the vedas agastya and his um, wife lopamudra they come down from the north cross the vindalayas he gets a promise from the vindalayas not to go any more until he comes back he never goes back and agastya gives us amazing teachings of the tamil culture siddha vaidya saiva siddhanta and it is said agastya lived in pondicherry there agastya and swamiji used to say that the place where kambli swami madam is today is the very place that agastya muni the great rishi uh, had his hermitage it is said that agastya at one time drank up the ocean the gods needed some help because all the demons the asuras were hiding under the waters and so they asked agastya he drank up the ocean imagine his capacity he had quite a digestive capacity there are other stories where he digested asuras who had changed into goats in order to uh, sort of trick him and instead he digested and became swaha hmm? it is said agastya drank up the ocean and helped the gods defeat the demons the asuras and this legend is also associated with masi magam here in pondicherry where all the gods come to the ocean on this day very auspicious day and on this auspicious day we want to talk about something very auspicious <laughs> well we have been talking about karma we have been talking about dharma and this karma that we experience 
as a result of our own doing. Our own karma comes back as karma, cause and effect. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, Newtonian physics. This karma is carried from lifetime to lifetime. And the carriers, how is this karma carried from lifetime to lifetime? By samskara and vasana. So the samskara vasana are the agents of karma carrying it from lifetime to lifetime and through this karma then manifesting our jati, ayu and bhoga. What type of genus are we going to be born into? Are we going to be andaja, born out of egg? Shvedaja, born out of slime? Udbija, born out of seed? Or Jarayuja, born out of the womb as a mammal and finally human? All of this, what type of genus, jati, are you? How long are we going to live? Will it be a short lifetime? Will it be healthy? Will it not be healthy? That are you is determined again by this. And bhoga, all the experiences we are going to have. Bhoga apavargartam drishyam is again Maharishi Patanjali's statement. Why everything exists for our experience and liberation. So experience and get liberated from it. So that bhoga, the experiences we are going to have in the lifespan which is Ayu, which is also based on the genus, the jati into which we are born. Jati, Ayu, Bhoga. These are determined by the karma which is carried from lifetime to lifetime by the samskara vasana complex. So what are these samskaras? Samskaras are the conditioned habits. It is our conditioning. Sam, Sama. To do the same, Kara. Kara is to do Sama the same. Sama, Kara, Samskara. It is, it is the accumulation, Sam, of all the doings you do in the same way again and again. What a beautiful way to understand conditioned responses. The conditioning and the conditioned responses are the samskaras, the habitual patterns. You ask many people, why do you do it this way? We have always done it this way. I have always done it this way. My parents have always done it this way. My family has always done it this way. In Indian weddings, when people come together, it's a family is coming together, there's always a conflict. Will you do the ceremonies as per the husband's family or the wife's family? Is one will say, Aha, Nang Ibdida Sevo. Yenga family Ibdida Sevo. This is the family samskara conditioning. We will only do it this way. We have always done it this way. I will not do it any other way. That is the samskara conditioning. And we are caught in conditioned response. It doesn't matter what people say to us, it doesn't matter how they say to it, we react the same way because we are conditioned to react that way. That is a samskara pattern. And Swamiji used to say, samskara is going in circle again and again. And he said, you keep on going in circle again and again and you dig your own trench. Because you are going in the same place again and again, you keep on digging deeper, deeper, deeper. And finally, all that somebody has to do is put some sand and say, rest in peace. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Because you have dug your own grave by doing the same thing again and again and again. You have never created a variety. You have been stuck in the conditioning, the samskara. And until and unless you have an escape velocity. When the rockets and all want to go out of Earth's gravitational pull and go out into space, they have to have what is called escape velocity. So your samskaras, you have to escape out of them into the escape velocity and that escape velocity is the power of choice, the superpower of being human. Where you can choose, I am not going to do it the way I have always done it. Let me try to do it differently. Let me try to be different. Let me try to think differently, talk differently, do it differently. Can there be 
a changed, different, transformative, revolutionary pattern of behavior rather than conditioned response. This is how you outgrow the samskara. Initially, you need to control the negative samskara. Move from negative samskara into positive samskara. That is why in Indian culture, Shodasha samskara are there. There are there 16. Type of samskaras you do from birth to death. In fact, from conception onwards till death. These are positive habitual patterns that are helping you create structure in life. The samskara of the Indian culture is to create a structure in life for stability. But then you don't just want to be stable because that is tamasika guna. You want to transcend it and you want to escape, escape velocity, escape out of the conditioned responses into the transformative, evolutionary, higher aspects of who you truly are. So, replace the negative samskaras with positive samskaras, but then even the positive samskaras are still samskaras, conditioned responses. You have to outgrow them. Anya samskara pratibandhi, says Maharishi Patanjali. Now, how are these samskaras fed by the vasanas? So, what are the vasanas? Vasanas are the inherent tendencies we have. They are the tendencies we have that are part and parcel of keeping everything moving. Because of the tendency, you have the conditioning. Because of the conditioned tendencies, you end up doing the same thing, creating more and more karma and thus influencing each and every lifetime into the jati, ayu and boga that then manifests. These vasanas, our tendencies that are there, they are the latent tendencies, often they are hidden. Samskaras are a bit more manifest. Vasanas are very hidden. So they are even more subtle. Vasanas are more subtle to the samskara. And both of them are subtle because you don't realize your karma is actually linked to the samskara vasana twin complex. Twin trouble, twin trouble of samskara vasana complex. The internet gods are really, really saying, Dr. Ananda, you talked about Masi Maham. You talked about all the gods coming down to the Pondicherry beach for Tirtavari. You didn't talk about the internet gods. Well, our salutations to the internet gods. And we'll try again. Karma is based on Samskara Vasana complex. Samskaras, the conditioned responses, the repeated doing of the same thing again and again, locks us into karma. Why do we do the same thing again and again? We do the same thing again and again and again because of the vasanas which are more subtle. These vasanas, these vasanas are of three types. They have vasana, the body vanities, the body hang-ups. Loka Vasana, the hang-ups of one status and position in life, the Loka that we are in. And the third is Jnana or Vidya Vasana, the attachment that comes from our sense of knowing everything. We think, oh, I am so wise. Look at me. I have all these degrees. Look at me. I am so educated. Look at me. I have had 50 years of yoga. I know this. I know that. Jnana Vasana, Vidya Vasana locks you into the samskara of doing the same thing again and again creates karmic bondage and karmic baggage. So, the Vasanas, they have Vasana, body hang-ups. It could be positive, it could be negative. For example, you like your body, you dislike your body. You liking your body is the Klesha Raga. You disliking it is the Klesha Dvesha. You liking your position in life is Raga. You not liking it is Dvesha. You thinking you are very intelligent is the Raga. You think that you don't know anything that is a Dvesha. So this is where liking or disliking both are creating attachment. Raga and Dvesha are both creating attachment with regard to the Vasanas. 
Deha Vasana, there are some people they walk around as if they, are, they think they are the most handsome, beautiful person on earth. There are others who walk around with such an inferiority complex that I am no good. Hmm? My, uh, I look so ugly, my nose is not long enough, my fingers are too short and stubby. Huh? All this nonsense. Then, oh look at my position, I am born in this family, I am that, I am this and then another. Oh look at me, poor me, I don't have anything in life, no family support. It is a loka vasana. And then, I knew, know so much or I don't know anything. I have to study, nobody has taught me anything, I am a fool, I am an idiot, I am stupid. That is the other end of the Jnana uh, Vidya Vasana. What these Vasanas are doing is, they are locking you into the system of karma. Samskara is locking you because you are doing the same thing again and again and everything you do is going to create the cause effect cycle, karma. My action is going to become my reaction. So. Samskara, doing the same thing again and again, is going to lock you into the karma. Vasanas, by the bondage they create to likes and dislikes about the body, about one's place in society and one's knowledge system. They again create attachment and bondage and that is why the Samskara Vasanas are the subtle complexities that drive the manifestation and creation of karma. So if we do not deal with the samskara and vasanas, karma cannot be eradicated. And the samskara vasanas are linked to the kleshas. And these are creating what are called vitarka. Again Maharishi Patanjali. I tell you, Maharishi Patanjali has analyzed everything about the human mind and beyond. He says there are the vitarka. He uses the term vitarka. What are these vitarka? They are the deviants. They deviate you away from the path. Your path is your dharma marga. You are born for a purpose, but you are deviated by the vitarka. So what are these vitarkas? And what drives the vitarka? Vitarka himsadaya. He is given an example, himsa, violence. Because one of the most primitive aspects of every living being is violence. Violence is one of the most primitive aspects of all living beings because violence enables you to survive. Violence enables you to survive by getting rid of the threat. Abhinivesha Klesha, can you see the link? Abhinivesha says I should survive the other. So if I am to survive, you cannot exist. I have to get rid of you, so violence comes in. That is why violence is such a primitive, ingrained part of our very living nature. Every living being, its primitive nature is violence. That is why the first of the Yama, which is trying to say no to that old, lower, subhuman aspect is Ahimsa. Why Ahimsa comes first? Because you have to first deal with this most primitive tendency which is violence for the cause of survival. That is why when Pat uh, Maharishi Patanjali talks about it, he says, Vitarka Himsa Daya. Himsa at all. Himsa is not the only one. Himsa is the primitive manifest one. There are many, many more. But himsadaya, then what is this violence? Not just violence. See, violence is using as an example. People get locked into it. They don't understand these teachings. The yogic scriptures are class notes. They are not instruction manuals. They are class notes, not instruction manuals. Because these class notes need a living teacher, a living tradition to be understood in the context. The modern... Why am I off onto my tangent now? <laughs> the modern post-lineage, no-lineage, anti-lineage, I know it all, yoga scholars, yogi idiots, think 
I have the scripture. I just need to read it. Interpret it in modern terms. They don't understand the context of the culture at all. They take it out of context and they butcher it. That's the word. Butcher. Violence. Yeah, that's what they are doing to it. And because they have very good skills, people think, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that book. New book. Wonderful book. Beautiful nonsense. That's all it is. Himsa. At all. Himsa, etc., etc., etc. Krita Karita Anumodita. He says, this can be the deviant, for example, violence can be manifesting as Krita. You are doing it. I go and kill you. Krita. Karita. I pay somebody to kill you. Krita. I kill you. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Krita, I kill you. Karita, I pay somebody to kill you. Anumodita, somebody is killing you and I stand there doing nothing. What a great psychologist Maharishi Patanjali is. This is what we all are doing every day of our life. Either we are doing things that are deviants Deviant means moving us away from our essential nature. Fine. So we are constantly deviating by the deviants. Either we are doing it, we are having somebody else doing it, we are instigating somebody else to doing do it, or we are allowing others to do it without doing anything. Sins of omission and sins of commission, both are there in karma. Krita karita anumodita. But what drives this? Loba, Krodha, Moha, Purvaka. Patanjali brings in the Shat Ripus. The six enemies of the spirit that tear us apart. They rip us apart. So they are called Ripus. Ripu is that which rips you apart. You become peace, 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 peace meal and you lose all your mental peace. Loba, Krodha, Moha, Purvaka. So these are the Shatrifus. He's only given Loba, Krodha, Moha, three. You say Patanjali only said three. No, no, no. He is giving an example. He thought you have a brain and you would use it. I told you class notes. You just write three and you think, okay, fine. You know the rest of it. I don't have to tell you again and again. It's like every time I talk to you, I, I don't have to tell you, I am Dr. Ananda Balayogi Bhavanani, blah, 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 blah. I just say, you know, I'm Dr. Ananda, fine. Or I even just say, you know, I feel. And you know that it is me. I don't have to keep on repeating the same thing. These class notes, when you take notes, you just start, you know, having shorthand and, you know, symbols and all. That's what these yogic scriptures are. Loba Krodha Moha. He is telling us that these deviants that pull us away from our purpose, these vitarkas, for example, violence, that could be you do it, have somebody do it or let others do it. This is driven by the Shatripus and then what happens? Mridumadhyaya Adhimatra. It could be in different levels of intensity. Mild violence, moderate violence, severe violence. Mridumadhyaya Adhimatra. And what does it bring? Dukkha Ananta Ajnana Pala. It brings Dukkha and Ajnana. Ignorance, Anandapala, infinite fruits of suffering are going to be there. The ignorant suffering is going to be there for infinity because you are stuck in the same rut of conditioned tendencies of the samskara vasana pattern. You don't need any new age theories, okay? Maharishi Patanjali has it all. He has it all. Try to understand Maharishi Patanjali. You understand all of this. You don't need all these big, big names who have all these fancy titles spouting new age wisdom hmm? on TV, on FM radio and every place. You don't need that. Just go to the source, please. You try to understand the source and interpret it from your own life experiences. Try to let it come alive in you. 
People ask me, Dr. Ananda, which is the best commentary on the Yoga Sutras? They half expect me to promote my own book. I don't. My answer is the best commentary on Yoga Sutras will be the one you write in your life. The one you write in your life where you try to understand Maharishi Patanjali through your own life experiences and sadhana. Not somebody else's interpretation. That is fine as guidance. But the best one, the best one is the one that you experience. So, Mridu Madhya Adhimatra Dukkha Ajnana Anantapala Iti. And because of that, you have to bring in Pratipaksha Bhavana. You have to bring in the contrary attitude as the antidote to all of this nonsense that is happening. Coming back, we have the Samskara, we have the Vasana. So, the Vasanas are the tendencies that are driving this whole system. Samskaras are keeping it going. So, the drivers of the system are the Vasanas. The machinery of the system that keeps it going is the Samskara and the manifestation is Karma. But behind all of this, what is it? What is the hidden force that sustains it? One is the Klesha. One is the Klesha. The Kleshas are sustaining this. Because they sustain, the Kleshas sustain the Vasanas. The Vasanas are sustained. Please understand the Vasanas are sustained by the Kleshas. But there is also another aspect which Maharishi Patanjali has told us. What is that? Shat Ripu. Loba Krodha Moha he has said. These Shat Ripus are Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Madha, Matsarya. Kama. Unfulfillable desire. That word itself tells you no escape. That is why Lord Shiva has to burn Kama. Hmm? That transformative consciousness of Shiva, that is what Shiva is. Not, not the guy sitting on Mount Kailas having a cup of chai. Hmm? That, is, that is just for us to get a mental picture. Shiva represents the transformative consciousness. Tadeko Vashishta Shiva Kevaloham says Adi Shankara. That Shiva, transformative consciousness, the process of transformation has to burn. How can transformation occur? It has to burn the unfulfillable desire because you cannot fulfill it. The word itself is unfulfillable. Bottomless pit. Doesn't matter what you put into it, you will never fill it because it is bottomless. Unfulfillable desire is karma. So it is one driver. Krodha. Rage. Rage. Because what happens when your desire is not fulfilled, you go into rage. And when you go into rage, there is total confusion. As the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna tells you. Krodhad Bhavadi Sammoha. What if he says, Kamat Krodo Abhijayate. From unfulfilled desire comes rage. Kamat Krodo Abhijayate. From Krodha, Krodhad Bhavadi Sammoha, Sammoha Smriti Vibrahma, Smriti Brahmshad, Buddhi Nasho. Your whole capacity of logical reasoning is thrown out the door, lock, stock, and barrel when you go into rage. Krodha. It drives. You know, most people, if you look at how these samskaras and vasanas manifest, there is a lot of rage involved in it. It is a very strong driving force. Kama, Krodha, Loba, Greed. You cannot ever fulfill it. As the Mahatma said, there is enough on this planet for every person's need, but not enough to fulfill any one person's greed. Greed is such a issue that drives it. Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha. 
Bhagavad Gita also uses that word moha. They call it delusion, illusion and all. I say it is delusional psychosis. And the most common issue of humanity today is delusional psychosis and very, very difficult to manage it. We are locked in delusional psychosis. Moha. Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Mother, Me, Mine, I. You remember that Jnana Vasana, Deha Vasana, Loka Vasana, they are all driven by that Me. I am, I am very good or I am no use. See this, I am the greatest is also Mother. I am the worst is also Mother. So when people run around saying, I am no good, I am no good, don't think they don't have ego. They have the biggest ego. And there's one ego which is I am the best and then the other ego is I am the worst. Both are ego. Both are mother. Hmm? Raga Dvesha coming in there. As I said, you like your nose, you don't like your nose. Both are Deha Vasana. You like your position in life, you don't like it. Both are Loka Vasana. You like, you think you know something, you think you don't know something. Both are still Jnana Vasana. They are still the Vasana. Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Mother. Matsarya, jealousy, envy. Oh my, this world would be such an amazing place. We just let, let if we can just let others enjoy themselves. It's always why them, huh? how do they deserve it? How can I get back at them? How can they get it and not me? Oh my God, right from childhood. And you know, this is fueled by ignorant parenting who is constantly comparing the children with somebody else. Kids come home. See, I cannot talk about the rest of the world, but from Indian perspective, I can. I've seen enough thousands and thousands of kids over the last three decades. And I, I know the conditioning of children and the parents extremely well. The kid comes home. Mom! I got 95% in the exam. You know what happens? It's not well done. I'm so proud of you. You are doing wonderful. You can keep on it. No. How much did your friend get? How much did your friend get? How much did your class topper get? How much did that boy or that girl get? First question from our typical Indian parents. We are not happy with what our kid has done. We are always trying to find someone to compare in the class. And this kid has come home with 95% and the first question is, how much did the other person get? And the kid says, well, they got 96. And then the immediate reaction, you idiot. This kid has got 95. You idiot. You couldn't get 96. <laughs> <laughs> what type of psychological trauma we talk about post-traumatic stress disorder huh? what type of trauma is being inflicted in this all because of this attachment to, to the so-called vidya, jnana, vasana that translates at our level as your marks and grades what grade did you get what mark did you get which school did you go to? Which university? You didn't go to Oxford? Oh, he went to Oxford. <laughs> Cambridge, Oxford, huh? Harvard Medical School. Huh? Come on, he's also learning medicine. I'm also learning medicine. Huh? You can be a dumb student in a great institution and a great student in a dumb institution. Both are possible. We get locked into this. We get locked, locked into this. And that is why the Shatripus along with the Kleshas, they are the behind the scene drivers of the Vasana Samskara twin complex that then are manifesting in our life as what we understand as Karma. And that is why dealing with Karma is not so easy because you have to go back and you have to deal with the very deep parts of you which are the Shatripus and Kleshas. Many years ago, I composed a song on the Ripus. We made a dance out of it also. Invoking the spirit of Lord Shiva because Shiva is the principle of transformation, transformative consciousness that burns away the Shatripus. 
When you burn away the Shatrapus, you have burnt away the Adi, the primary cause that lies behind the Vasana Samskara that then lie behind Karma. That is why when we sing to the Shiva Lingam, the Lingashtagam, Janma Jadukka Vinashaka Lingam, all the suffering of being born again and again, you are eradicating. The Sabija Karma, Sanchita Karma, Sanchita Papa Vinashaka Lingam, we sing. All that accumulation, the Sanchita Papa, Sabija Karma is eradicated. That is the principle of transformation of Shiva because once you are on that path of transformation, you have got in touch with the escape velocity to come out of this Vasana Samskara sludge. Ripunashani Somashekara Ripunashani Nasha means to destroy, not Nasa, Nashani. Ripu Nashane, Soma Shekara. Soma, you are like the moon, cool. Uh, you are cool and you are eradicating all that is making us uncool. Uh -huh. Mr. Cool. <laughs> Ripu Nashane, Soma Shekara, Jagati Naira Chekum, Jagadishwara. You are the Jagat Isha. You are the Lord of the universe who is protecting. Jagatine Rachikum Jagatishwara Ripu Nashani Soma Shekara Jagatine Rachikum Jagatishwara Ripu Nashani Soma Shekara Jagatine Rachikum Jagatishwara Ripu Nashani Kama Krodha Loba Mohammed Matsarya Kama Krodha Loba Mohammed Matsarya Arupa Gaya Rikum Arunayaka You are destroying this Kama Krodha Loba Mohammed Matsarya the six enemies of the spirit and blessing me with your compassion. Kama Krodha Loba Muhammad Matsarya Arupa Gaya Rikum Arunayaka Ripu Nashani And then how is this happening? By the repeated Japa. Maharishi Patanjali also says the repeated Japa. Here in this case, Panchakshara Japa. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Panjakshara Bija Mandiratai Nanjabit Panjakshara Bija Mandiratai Nanjabit I am doing the japa of the Panjakshara Bija Mantra Panjakshara Bija Mandiratai Nanjabit Paripurana Ananda Nilayadaya Sayyid and you are giving me that complete paripurna ananda, that state of complete bliss. Because everything else is suffering. Dukkha meva sarvam vivekinaha. Everything is suffering. When you eradicate this, you go into that state of unparalleled wholesome bliss. Paripurna ananda nilayadaya seidhe. Panjakshara Bija Mandiratai Nanjabit Paripurana Ananda Nilai Adaya Seed and Tavapaya Naye Tandavulbaya Isha. May you give me, may you bless me with the benefit of my efforts. Tavapayan, my tapasya. Remember? Kriya Yoga Tapaswadhyaya Ishwara Pranidhanani Kriya Yoga It is to eradicate the Kleshas Tava Payanaye Tandarulbaye Isha Tava Payanaye Tandarulbaye Isha Tripurantakara Triloka Nada You are the one who ended the Tripura In the Tripura Rahasya you have ended the three the demonic uh, palaces, fortresses, 
and you are the one who is the Lord of all the three worlds. Tripulanta kala trilokan nadam panjakshar bija mandiratai nanjabit paripurna ananda nilai adaya seidu tavapayanaye tandarul bayesha Tripulanta kala triloka nada vipurnashane soma segala jagati naira chikum jagadishwara vipurnashane Destroying the ripus, eradicating the ripus, so that then the vasana samskara, they don't have foundation, they have they have been undermined. When you take the ripus out of the equation, when you take the kleshas out of the equation, the samskara vasana complex has become unsteady. When the samskara vasana complex is unsteady and you have eradicated it, the karma, the root of the karma itself has been dissolved. And that is why Om Namah Shivaya, 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 Shivaya Namah Namah Shivaya, Shivaya Namah Namah Shivaya, Om 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 Namah Shivaya. Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. Reminded of my father on this Masimaham day going to the beach eh, and singing for all the gods there. What vibrancy. Bhakti Yoga is one of the straight paths, Ishwara Panidana, to the highest. It's not easy. It's a tough one because can we have that capacity for complete surrender to the divine will? Can we give over to the highest consciousness, letting go of all our attachments, all our safety mechanisms that we have put into place? The vasanas, the samskaras are very insidious. They are driven by an even more insidious background of the ripus and the kleshas. What a great effort we have to make. And that effort starts with Shraddha, faith, conviction, belief that yes, I can, I will, I am able. Then you have that strength and courage, virya, to push through the obstacles. Smriti, learn from the past mistakes and enhance your consciousness for Samadhi Pragna so that that highest Samadhi and that Pragna can come into your consciousness. You have to grow into it. Shraddha, Virya, Smriti, Samadhi, Pragna. This is the way forward. A way that has been given by Maharishi Patanjali. So many great rishis before him. People often mistakenly say, Patanjali is the father of yoga. No, no, no. He would not like you to say that. There is no father of yoga. Yoga is timeless. Huh? It's Ananta and Anadi. There is no start, no end to yoga. It is timeless. It is permanent. Transformation is permanent. But Maharishi Patanjali, one of the greatest of the rishis, Pravaram Muninam Patanjali. And he has codified so beautifully these concepts. And yet we just memorize it for the sake of some exam. Memorize it to pass some QCI, YCB, UGC net. <laughs> oh my God, teacher training 200 hour. We need to work on ourselves. We need to go in. We need to do the dirty work. Go and clean up the mess that is within us. Clean out the samskara vasanas, clean out the kleshas and the ripus, and then we start to manifest who we truly are. Our swadharma starts to manifest in abundance. This is my message today for you.
Masi Magam, a very auspicious day in this part of the world. All the gods are at the ocean having the bath. Let us purify ourselves from inside out. Let us be the best version of ourselves. That is my prayer on this day. May we have the capacity to give over. May we have the capacity to give over to the higher. Om Loka Samastam Sugino Bhavantu Sarve Janaha Sugino Bhavantu Om Shantihi 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 Om Danyabadaha Nantri Manakkam, thank you for being with me. Have a wonderful time wherever you are. Be the best version of yourself.